Good evening, billionaires. It's your billionaire boss, Sheik Tiffany Renee, H-E-I-R, heir to the throne, joint heir with Christ here to equip you to live this kingdom life. And this is another episode of Biblically Speaking, when we take trending topics and we give you a biblical world view. Remember to love, like, and share this for the mature saints. We talk about everything Jesus, everything kingdom, and everything supernatural here. So, um, it's not for babies. This is for people who own some steak and potatoes, okay? <laughs> so I go, hope you guys are having a fantastic Wednesday. We have been exploring the realms of the kingdom and it has been good. And so I want to share with you tonight, we're going to talk about visitations. Last week, uh, we talked about fear and engaging, entering into the kingdom and entering into the kingdom of heaven um, and how sometimes fear can stop us from doing that. And so today we're going to talk about visitations and um, we're going to go in a little bit deep today. I don't think it's going to be very long, but um, I have some exciting things to just share with you. So you're going to want to join in, watch the replay or share this and share this with people who you know this can benefit. We are leveling up spiritually um, with uh, those with billionaires. So hopefully you guys are excited about that. So let's go before the father and then we'll get into our lesson. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We magnify you. We glorify you. We expect great revelation from tonight. And so as we explore the realms of the kingdom, we ask that you bring, just breathe a fr fresh revelation on it. Give us, anoint my lips so that the words that come out of my mouth will be pleasing to you. But we thank you for all that you're doing, all that you will do. And we stand in ex great expectations. So we love you. We praise you in Jesus name. Amen. All right. So I'm going to bring this over to here. All right, I'm gonna bring, I think I'm gonna bring this here. All right, there we go. All righty, so we are exploring the realms of the kingdom. And will give you a revelation. It really stretches your perspective. So I've always talked about health and healing because there have been times where you all know of my story of, of God healing my kidneys. Um, but there are some other things in the body that I want healed. And I've always said, you know, Jehovah Rapha, you are a healer. And I've uh, prayed different healing scriptures and believe for healing and I've received it. And I know conceptually God to be the great physician, but I hadn't really approached him as the great physician. Um, I, and this comes as a lesson. So my, I grew spiritually this weekend at the, my money grows on trees Re revelation and wealth conference. Um, it was phenomenal. God dropped nuggets. He unlocked a plethora of things and we got to have quite a few visitations. Um, and we got to meet him as the great physician. So I learned years ago when I started really building my relationship with the Godhead when I lived in San Antonio, Texas, which I realized was a very pivotal part in my spiritual life. Uh, it's when I met Zari. <laughs> so, um, but during that time, I conceptually understood God as father, but I had not really built an intimate relationship with him as God the father. And so as I began to approach him as a father, he began to reveal himself to me as Abba. And so that's when I would have walks with him. He would embrace me, I'd lay in his lap and he would tell me things and just, you know, give me comfort and stuff. Because at the time, Dr. Carter, one of my spiritual mothers, had went back to Chicago and I felt alone being in San Antonio. So I really conceptually for years understood Father, Son, Holy Spirit. 
But when I was in San Antonio by myself, I really got to meet them as such in that care in those characters. Well, we know God can be so many things. And so this visitation that we did with Patty, who is also a part of 1123 Ministries, she led us to have an appointment with the great physician. And it was so sweet because in my appointment, when I when I met with the great physician, when I met with God, he said, I'm so happy you're here, you know, and he gave me a prescription like he gave me the things that he wanted me to do for my health. Now, how awesome is it is if you're dealing with something spiritually and in your physical body and opposed to going to the doctor first, you decide you're going to make an appointment with the great physician and you actually take a visitation to heaven, sit under the great physician and he tells you what to do for your body. How much more effective do you think that would be? This is why visitations are so important. We should not be waiting to die to go to heaven. We should be creating, we should be going to heaven and then bringing things down from heaven to earth. We should be experiencing heaven every day. How else can we create and exercise his will on earth as it is in heaven if you never go there? So that's what we're talking about in visitations. Um, Ian says there is a restoration of the, of lost things going on in the realm of the kingdom right now that is preparing the church. And I'm a witness of that um, for those who receive it. So those of you who are listening and who really want to grow in your spirit and really because we should be doing supernatural things here and we can only do that if we're functioning from the spirit. So you need to spend time in the heavenlies in order to be able to do that. He says, one of the things that has been lost in the church is the arena of government. I mean, world government, not just church government. We have lost that too, in many ways. Um, and we can see that, especially here in America. Well, really all over the world that the government, in America, we were supposedly um, formed under godly principles, right? And so for a lot of times, a lot of things, our constitution had has words and things of that, that intertwine the Bible or Bible principles to exercise that government here on earth for us in America. Well, as you can see, a lot of those things are being dismantled. They're being overturned. And that's because the body is not in, in its proper place. We are not establishing the ecclesia here on earth. We're the ecclesia here on earth, which means we are the governing body of the kingdom here on earth. And so we should be going to heaven, seeing what's going on, what getting the decrees and bringing them out here on earth and, and establishing king, the king of kingdom of heaven here on earth. That's what we should be doing. But if you never take a trip to heaven, you never, so you don't really know what's going on. It's just like I talked about. That's why it's so important for us to be a part of like, go to city council meetings and things like that. You need to know what's going on in your city, in your state, in your country, and be actively participating in those things. Because when you're not, then the enemy comes in to steal, kill, and destroy. And we see that happening here in America. So, excuse me, my sinuses have been doing pain and I got a concoction to drink this morning that I had did not take, but I do know what I need to do. I just haven't done it. So um, he says, God is dismantling the processes of the son of human structure. I'm, saying, I'm sorry, rewind. God is dismantling the processes of some of the human structures that have been put in place. And there are other things that are already try trying to fill it. So when he starts dismantling these things, let me see, um, this computer is making noises. I'm sorry, guys, but that's getting on my nerves. You to shut down, shut down this other computer. All right, so y'all get a closer look at me. <laughs> All righty, so um, when God is dismantling these things, and what He's saying is that if we don't take our rightful place when these things are being dismantled, then the enemy will come in and take um, precedence over it. So that's our responsibility. Um. 
He says some of the human structures are just not right. They are all they are okay, but they are earthly for those who experience the realm of heaven, who chase after it and go into that that place where God is. God is going to put you together because He wants a family. Um, and so He goes on to talk about. So you go in and God gives you these things. It's just like when you think about it, like you have dinner with your family. Like I know for us, um, sometimes we'll we'll probably have breakfast more together because my husband gets home so late um, and then my son is already in bed. Um, so we don't really have dinner together. But in the morning, you know, my husband meets with my son, they pray and I pray with them sometimes. And then we will have dinner together. And we'll discuss like what our day looks like. Um, how we're feeling about things, what I, you know, what obstacles we're facing. We pray for each other and just share those things. Well, if I never have that time with my husband or with my son, I don't know what's going on with them. But if I meet with them and I talk with them, and I get to know with them, I'm intimate with them, then they know that I care. And then we can work things out together. That is what we're supposed to be doing in the kingdom. So we should be constantly coming to the father's table he's telling us what are things that are going on these are the things that i want you to do in china these are the things i want you to do in iran these are the things that i want you to do in america in africa costa rica whatever wherever he's given these things that are happening and he's telling us what he wants to be exercised out on earth and our job is to fulfill those assignments but you never go to heaven you never sit before the father you never get your assignments you never know what's going on then you just go through life frivolously. And that's not what that's not what God has ordained for us. Um, so he says he wants he wants the whole family to come together because when we do that, we can talk, we can share things and we can laugh together. Um, he says in the next five to 10 years, you're going to find that there are things that suddenly crop up in the church all over the world. And you will be saying, well, I, we did not know that know any of anything about this doctrine, but suddenly it's everywhere. It's going to be like like that because there will be people who are going into heaven and sharing revelation. And you hear this now about the kingdom of God. For a long time, I, I learned about church, but I didn't really learn about the kingdom. And it wasn't until I read Rediscovering the Kingdom that I realized I had a change of perspective. Well, now you hear about kingdom all the time. And years ago, I remember I used to put kingdom living on my hashtags and people used to be like, what's that? You know, or now you hear more people talking about the feast, um, the uh, honoring the feast, the, honoring God's feast days. And I remember that I was um, celebrating Rosh Hashanah, uh, the beginning of the Hebrew year in the fall. And um, I remember one of my friends who is a good friend of mine and i know it was just out of ignorance she was like what you doing ramadan you know so she didn't know but now there are a lot of people that partake in the feast days because god is establishing his kingdom more and more on earth and we're experiencing that because people are being unlocked educated equipped and they're exercising so he says i have been in in um let me see there is going to be a standard set where true government is exercised in the spirit over the over the earth. And suddenly the earth is going to respond to it. Another thing is the courts of heaven. Years ago, I have been talking about the courts of heaven. And now, you know, and I've had people who are believers, been in the church for a very long time, argue with me about the courts of heaven. And I or try to argue with me because I'm not going to argue with you when it's something I've experienced. <laughs> I know that is real because I have gone there. I have had things broken off my life. I have had decrees. Um, I've had uh, divorce decrees from breaking um, divorce from idolatry, from, uh, you know, things that not just myself, but things that my ancestors have done. I've had those things null and void. I've gone into the courts of records. like. So I've experienced this. So I'm not going to argue with you with something that I've experienced. It's just not going to happen. But I will share the revelation that I have. And sometimes, and I've had this to happen, I'll share that and I'll give what I what I know to be true. And then I'll plant that seed. And years later, you'll come back and say, you know what? 
what you said to me, Tiffany, was I had never experienced that. I didn't had no revelation of that, but now I do. And I've had people to do that because, and I've had to do that with people too. So we are all learning and growing, but the course of heaven is real. I've been in it. In fact, typically <laughs> for a long time, when I would take visitations to heaven, that's exactly where I would enter in because I had to get so many records together. And so, and that's because I just didn't know. And so now that I know, I do. I have visitations. I share in those things. Um, there are things that God is unlocking to the church and it is all about the kingdom. It is all about being in the kingdom and experiencing the kingdom. This is what Ian is saying. If some of this is, and he says this, and I think it's good. If some of this is going over your head, that's okay. Just work on it little by little. Um, so he talks about how do you become attuned to this thing? And that's one of the things I like about 1123 Ministries and Zari's teaching is and Patty's is because she gives you practical things to do. She doesn't just talk to you about doing it. She shows you what to do and you have to experience it for yourself. So he says, how do you become attuned? Easy by being discipled by another person who goes there. So right now, you're being discipled by me. These are things that I, my experiences, and I'm sharing them with you. You want to get under somebody who goes, who is in tune with the spirit realm, particularly the kingdom of heaven. I declared this week um, after, um, after um, this weekend, after going to my money grows on trees, I was telling my, telling people, telling my friends, I was like, you know what? I only want to be around friends who um, experience the kingdom, like who experience in this, who go to heaven and have their angels and who really dwell in the supernatural on a, on a day to day basis, um, because it just helps to level you up. And then when you're having these visit visitations and you're having these supernatural experiences, it's great when you're able to talk with people who understand that. <laughs> Now, of course, I'll disciple and talk with other people and educate all the time because that's that's my gifting. So I'm not saying I won't be around them or shun them or anything, but I am going to be intentional about surrounding myself with people who get it and who are in that realm. That's just my preference and where I'm going. I'm going to need that. Boop. So <laughs> um, he says, you need to be taught in the same way as I, that he's been taught by the spirit of knowledge. The spirit of knowledge, guys, is a spirit by going to its classroom. There are often 15 or 20 people who sit there from the world of believers when I go there. This is what he says. Now, I've gone to the classroom. I've had wisdom in there. Um, and the spirit of knowledge has been in there. But a lot of times wisdom is the one who's... Um, in the class in the classroom but the spirit of spirit of knowledge is not he says you see the classroom is omnipresent but the spirit of knowledge is not it is one spirit and we're going to talk about um the seven spirits of god when we get further into the book um so he says you can't take someone into the realm or world you have you have never been to yourself so you can't be saying come to heaven or take trips to heaven and you haven't been to yourself. Um, unfortunately, there are many people who, um, many diehards who are trying to do that. And I won't get into that. This, you can't have jurisdiction where you, you can't have jurisdiction where you haven't gone. So you have to practice these things, experience them yourself, and then you can, and, you know, show other people to do it. And I have done that. Another way to become attuned is, familiarity with what the word says. So you need to read the word and meditate on the word. And what you'll see is that the more you read the word and really meditate on it, when you get to heaven, you'll notice things that you already seen and know. And it's just kind of like confirmation that you're there. Um, um, so you want to read the word, you want to meditate on that. And that is another way to become familiar with um, exploring the realms of heaven. Another thing you want to do is record, review, and revisit if the is the cycle of revelation training. I'm going to say that again. Review, revisit, and record is the cycle of revelation training. How do you revisit the things you have experienced? 
He says, first, you must open your spirit to that reality again. I do this um, like this. I typically will set aside time to, uh, and, and I do intercessory prayer for, uh, for uh, a ministry too. So that helps because, well, let me tell you how God started that. So they wanted to have an intercessor to pray for the ministry. And so about how I said that I would do that. And um, they just wanted somebody to pray for an hour um, each week. And so I committed to doing that. Now, once I started doing it, God started revealing to me things about the ministry that I would, you know, prophesy or give to the ministry from my sessions and spending in prayer with, with the Godhead. When I pray, I enter into the spirit. I go into heaven. And while I'm there, God shows me things. He tells me great and mighty things I did not know, which is what he promised. That will be my thing for five, seven, eight, three. So you guys are hear me say that. <laughs> but God will. So I was doing this for the ministry. And, and God said, you know, I can do this for you. And I was like, yeah. You know, because for long years, I would have dreams. And I would write my dreams down. And you guys have all seen my dream book. But now, uh, and you've seen my prayer journal too. But now I have my... Uh, I have this book here where and you can see God gives me all kinds of stuff. Um, but I have this book here where God will give me uh, as I'm in, as I take my visitation there and I'm praying, uh, he will show me sign, miracle signs and wonders. So he'll give me signs of things like um, one time I entered in and I just saw all of these like ribbons. It was like just kind of like a welcoming party. Um, and he was, that was just signifying that I, you're, you're approved. I'm happy for the work that you're doing. It was kind of like a celebration. And um, I've seen balloons go up um, in a part of heaven. I've seen, I've seen so much stuff that I, we could, I could write a book on that. But I typically, what I'll do is once I enter in, I will always have something to write on um, and write in because I'll record what I see. And then sometimes what I'm seeing, I'll ask questions and Holy Spirit will reveal to me um, what he wants me to understand from the images that I see or from the rooms that I go into or the places I, I explore. Um, and sometimes I'll just hear, I'll be in and I'll be in a room and I may just hear sounds. Sometimes I'm talking to angels. Sometimes I'm talking to people of old. Um Sometimes I'm talking to people who, my ancestors who've gone on to glory. Um, so it's been a plethora of things. But what I do every time is I record those things. Because some things are revealed to me then. And then sometimes I'll write down things and I don't necessarily get an answer right then. But I'll meditate on it. I'll review it. And then Holy Spirit will say, oh, well, that's what this means. So I'll, I'll, I'm constantly asking questions. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. And when you ask, you ask amiss. Well, I'm constantly asking Holy Spirit, what's the right question to ask? Or what should I say about this? I don't understand that. And he gives me the right things to say. So that's a part of what I do and how I enter in. And I record what I see. And then I meditate on it. And Holy Spirit will even reveal even more to me. Just like this weekend with, at the My Money Grows on Trees um, conference, I, um, you know, I got so many downloads, so much revelation. I was writing and writing and writing. And because I have good, good, good friends who love me and think about me, and I'm just so extremely blessed, my um, writer, Sean, bought me a journal. She bought me this journal to start for my my money goes on trees. And so I just have a plethora of notes that I'm just notes, notes and notes for days. So that I wrote down while I was there and some stuff I couldn't, you know, it just was so. Um, we were just in such overflow that after the conference on Saturday, Sunday, I kind of chill with my family when I got here. But on Monday, I took time to go through and really review the things that I had recorded and ask the questions and revisit it. And God gave me even more. 
So that's a way that you can do that. You can record it, review it, and revisit it, okay? So when I mean saying revisit, you can go back to that place in the spirit if you don't remember something. And typically things become, you begin to become familiar and things will start coming to mind. Um, he says people, many people have had encounters with the realm of glory, but then 25 years pass and they have not had another one. I've had a friend who said, you know, um, I haven't had this experience myself, but she said she used to speak in tongues and then she couldn't do it anymore. And I asked Holy Spirit, like, what was that about? And she, at the time, the church that we were in, tongues were not very prevalent. And so she said, and he said to me that um, you need to create an atmosphere where that can flow. And so at the time, she was at a place where that gift wasn't flowing. So she was had been bound in that area. But God will give, you know, um, can restore those things for you. Um, but I say that to say these people, what he was saying was you've had this experience with God, but you haven't heard from him or you haven't had an encounter for 25 years. God is a living God, guys. He's a living God. <laughs> he is ever present. You carry the spirit of the living God within your belly, like in within you. So there should not be times where you go years without having an encounter with, with the glory. That's because we haven't been trained to have these visitations and encounter the spirit. Um, so he says, you must go back and review and revisit the encounter. You do it by praying in tongues first, opening your spirit and activating and drawing on the memory of the last experience you had um, that, that you were connected with. Now, for some of us, you know, if you don't have um, the gift of tongues yet, if you want it, it's something you can ask for a gift. It's a gift God will, he wants to give you these things. Um, he's not trying to hold on to the gifts and, you know, that's a gift you can ask for it. God, if, you know, he sees fit, he'll give you according to your ability. Um, that's another lesson, but he will, he's not a respecter of person. So if you want it, you desire it, he can, he, he wants to give you these things. However, um, if you do not have the gift of tongues just yet, you can simply pray. You can worship and enter into his presence, okay? We enter into his gates with thanksgiving and praise. So if you don't have the tongues, that is not something to stop you. You can just simply enter into worship and praise and thanksgiving. And guess what? Woo, you have access in. Um, so he says, one day a woman from America saw an amazing prophetic person of God giving her a goblet and she drank wine from this goblet. It was the most amazing experience. When I asked her how long ago it was, she said it was about two years ago. I asked her what she did with, with it and she replied, what do you mean? I told her she had to go back and review and revisit and write down write it down because that is a doorway to the rest of it. I asked her, do you know what the hand was like that fed it to you? What do you know? about the room that is getting that it was sitting in in fact do you know what was in the bottom of the goblet or what the color of the wine was tell me what the goblet was like tell me what the rings that were on the hand that fed that fed you the goblet what was the person like who fed it to you what was the room like all of these are things or questions because it's really good because see god is a very intentional god so a lot of times we miss out on a lot of things because we don't ask questions Again, going back to we have not because we ask not and we don't explore things. And, you know, that that thing that. Um, wrong teaching that you can't question God and all of that. God wants you to seek him. Should, typically, when you seek something, you get you're getting to know you have to ask questions. OK, so and then he says you have not because you ask not. So God wants you to ask questions. He's not offended. He wants you to get to know him. He wants you to draw close. He wants to tell you great and mighty things that you did not know. So like scratch that thought process. If you've had an encounter with um, the spirit of the living God, if you've had encounters with angels with the spirit of knowledge with the spirit of might if you've had an encounter with whatever uh, supernatural encounters you have had 
you can sit and ask God, ask Holy Spirit, what what was that supposed to be? There have been dreams that I've gotten and I'm like, okay, I remember this, this, that, and the third. And I'll go back to the dream and then go back to what was I doing. And as I review and revisit things, more of it expands to me. And I know that you all have had some of those same experiences where you go back into a thing and then you see more of it as you begin to talk about it or as you begin to kind of meditate on it. And so God wants to show these things, guys. He's not trying to hide these things from you. And so you you want to ask them those questions. He says, encounters with the realm of glory are doorways that open up possibility, but you can only go back when you revisit them. So I spend time praying in tongues, focusing on the recall of the last experience. That is fantastic. Then it develops and becomes exciting. Then it becomes awe-inspiring. That is, Then it becomes hard work because you need to write down how you did it. It has taken me 12 years to get some of this down on paper. Um, it's hard work going through the process of what to do. Pray in the spirit, recall what happened in your imagination and make the choice to step back into the window and experience it. So guys, God wants to do these things with you. Um, it does take time. This is building. We call it, I call, we call it building in the spirit. So you go in and you are seeing, and the more you work that muscle, the more you become familiar with it and the more it becomes easier to you. Um, so he says, I can remember the first time I had an angelic experience. Now, I'm going to tell you about my first time having an angelic experience. That was really significant to me. Um, oh, I want to share this with you all. This is this is so good. <laughs> so when I was younger, I had an imaginary friend named Kiki. And I remember talking with Kiki and playing. And I remember just really being jovial with Kiki, right? So this weekend... Zari takes us into visitation, leads, guides us into visitation. And she says, um, ask for your guardian angel. And I'm like, oh, that's easy because I already know Jesse. Jesse was one of my guardian angels that revealed himself to me when I was in San Antonio, Texas. Again, San Antonio, pivotal time of my life. When Dr. Carter left to go back to Chicago, I started having these visitations with um, Jesse and I could see him. He's really huge. He's a big guy and he's very no nonsense. So um, I didn't feel afraid of him, but he would be in this, like, I would be walking and like see the shadow of him. And sometimes that would kind of like, you know, freak me out. So I was like, dude, I want your presence here. I want you to be here, but I don't want to see you because it's freaking me out. Not freaking me out in a, oh my God, I'm so scared way. No, but just like you, like startling me is really what was happening. I was like, I don't need to see you. I just need to know your presence is there and I can talk to you and we can do that. Now I'm much more mature. So it doesn't bother me when he's around. Um, but at the time it did. So um, I knew Jesse, but when she said, bring your guardian angels up, the word Kiki came to mind and I chuckled. And I said, well, Kiki was my imaginary friend. And she said, I am not imaginary. And she said it with like an attitude. And, I, and she appeared. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, you have been with me since the beginning of time. It was such a. Guys, so I and I used to have I can remember having full blown conversations, laughing and joking with Kiki. OK, she has been there for all this time. but. She, because I thought it was an imaginary friend, I hadn't been really talking to her nor using her. But girl, you're finna be on assignment now, so don't you worry. But um, and during the conference, I got so many angels released to me. It's like I got a whole team. We ready. Uh, so, <laughs> but I thought that that was pretty cool that God allowed me to be reintroduced to Kiki, and now we gonna do some things because I've been putting Jesse to work. Okay. I have a money angel. Um, I have a plundering angel who goes into the enemy camp and brings me back my stuff. Um, and angels, um, I read this book called Hiring the Heavenly, I think Hiring Heavenly Help or Host or something like that. But this lady had this um, encounter where there were angels up there just walking around bored because one they are assigned to people who are, are their guardian angels and they're not putting them to work. God, they're guys, they are here. They are part of your 
arsenal to minister to you. So we should be putting angels on assignment every single day. OK, they should be going and getting things that you need for to fulfill the assignment that you have here on earth. They are your heavenly help and they want to do it. That's what they're designed for. So when you don't use them. They ain't got nothing to do. They hope that just chilling, <laughs> you know, so um, and sometimes, too, they can be, you know, petition to other people um, for things. But. God wants us to exercise all of the tools that he gives us, right? And they're there to help you with your assignment. So ask, ask to um, Holy Spirit to reveal to you who your guardian angels are. And if you have any other angels that you need. So um, for the ministry, we have a tech angel. And I use, I use the tech angel here and there because last night I did not do that. And I needed to because me and Sean did a recording for... The God Factor, which is another is a podcast that we're going to be doing. Super excited about that because that's going to be super, super, super natural. But um, <laughs> um, anyway, I don't know why I didn't release that or lose that. I decreed and touched some things. But anyway, so you have angels that are assigned to you. You can also get more angels the more that you grow. God wants to. You know, he gives things according to your ability, right? So as you grow and mature, things are unlocked and released to you. So I have a plundering angel. Um, and you, you should go on. You should watch the The God Factor because that's a good story. I'm not going to go into all of that. But I had several angels. Um, Swift is another angel. That's a phenomenal story too. Because um, things came back quick. And if you haven't um, heard of my testimony on the $5 turning into a thousand, I'm telling you, it is supernatural over here and you guys better get with it because I'm, listen, I have a multiplication angel. It's going down in the kingdom, okay? So you have angels and God wants to reveal them to you. He wants you to use them because the enemy be out here using all his imps. You should be using all of your angels, all right? Um, Where do I want to go from there? And he talks about just different experiences with angels. He say they bring the liberty of heaven when they come into a room. Angels bring the liberty of heaven when they come into the room. They only come in because you are familiar with them and they want to be a part of what you are doing. The angels want to look into the things we are looking into because they do not know about them. All they know is about him. All they know is about Jesus because that's where they're where they function so they get to learn about all of these other things because we send them to do things isn't that that's why we have to partner with heaven people get this get this down in your spirit because i'll be doing all kinds of stuff in the, in the spirit okay i'll be riding on dragons he is it's it's fun um so he says some of us some of us might find feathers appear or other things because they will leave these little deposits and a lot of us have had that experience there is a door that the living creatures go through and when they go through it they move like lightning speed so swift is like that like you can just feel the when he comes in you can feel the and i'm like okay there you go swift go bring it back quick today <laughs> i'm gonna say that story for later oh the spirit told me to say that I'm going to say that for later. That's going to go on the God factor. But let me tell you, God is doing exceedingly above anything I can ask or think, okay? And I told one of my friends today, if she don't come to the um, My Money Grows on Trees um, conference next year, she can't be my friend because she got to level up spiritually. All my friends going to be, we're all winning. And I'm just surrounding myself with that, those type of people. So I hope you get this because it is good, good, good. Um, he talks about, I talked before, he says he talks about transit relocation. We had those types of experiences and revelations and prophecies about that too. I'm not going to go into all of that tonight because that might be like, you know, be, y'all ain't ready for that. What God is looking to do is giving, is giving us supernatural capabilities that can override every, every single natural law. Listen to me and listen to me well. What God is looking at doing is giving us supernatural cap capabilities that can override every single natural law so that means when these things are happening in your life 
like Jesse said, you don't listen. That's my angel. He told me you don't listen because I was going through something. And I was whining about something. And he said, you don't listen. And then I was like, listen to what? What are you talking about? <laughs> what are you talking about? And so then he, he gave me some, some instructions of things that I had asked for and that God had already said to me. And I hadn't used it. But then I was having a tantrum because I do that sometimes because I'm spoiled right, not rotten, as Zari says. But uh, I was having a tantrum about something. He was like, you don't listen. It's like, okay. So anyway, like I said, he no nonsense. So he get me together real quick. Um, But God is looking at doing, is giving us supernatural capabilities. So we are, your essence is spirit. You, the true, authentic essence of who you are is spirit. Your spirit functions in the supernatural, okay? So the more you can understand that, the more you experience that, the more you practice those things, the more you are acting like your father because he made us in his image and in his likeness. And I do what I see my father do, you know? So he speaks and creates, I speak and create. He commands angels. I command, I command angels because he's given me authority to do so. If he can talk to angels, so can I because I made his image and his likeness. Okay. If he can slay demons, I don't have to do that because I have angels to do it for me. Uh, okay. Back to it. All right. God wants us to experience some of these things. Um, and he wants you to visit heaven. He doesn't want you to think that you have to wait to come to heaven after you die. But you're, how else can you establish heaven on earth if you never go to heaven? It just reminds me of, I'm watching this movie called, this series called The Diplomat. I don't know if I talked about this before and I'm going to try to wrap it up. Yeah. So in The Diplomat, this woman is an ambassador for america and she is in london because she is the ambassador for america she has certain rights to exercise and to speak on behalf of america of the american government so when she needs to talk to a dignitary in london she is the one who conveys what america wants to do and where they stand on said issues she goes and have conversations with people who are in the executives of America, the president, the um, secretary of uh, the secretary, the vice president. Um, okay, I just want to say secretary of state. She talks to all of those people and they tell her, this is where we stand on this. This is what we're going to do. And this is what we're going to do. And she stands as the ambassador of America in London. She goes and she talks to the prime minister. And she says, this is where we stand with this. This is what we're going to do. That is what we do in the kingdom. If you are not taking visitations to heaven and having conversations with the king, how do you know what he's decreeing right now or what he wants you to do in a situation if you're not communicating with him? If you're not going to sit in these meetings where they're talking about things that are happening all over the world and things that are happening in your city, things that are happening in your state, because if you're in wherever you are, you have jurisdiction over, you are the representative representative of Christ there. So you should be talking to Christ, finding out what's going on in the kingdom of heaven and bringing those things now to earth and saying, this is where we stand. This is what we're doing. And this is how God feels about it. Because you're a kingdom ambassador. You're a kingdom citizen, but you live here on earth, okay? So the more you understand that, the easier it will be for you to understand these things are important. God wants you to take visitations into heaven. He wants to show you great and mighty things that you did not know. He wants to give you treasure. We received gold last week, weekend. Listen, yeah, but to get in heaven and try to find out what's going on so you can start really functioning in your own purpose. If you don't know what your purpose is, you definitely need to be spending some time in heaven. Because there's one, seven, Psalms 139, 16, there is a destiny book that has your life in it. Guess what? God wrote it before 
before he formed the earth. Okay. On you, there's a book. Go in, you see. Okay, we are in year peak. We are in year five, seven, eight, three. Uh, are we on track? This is what we should be doing at this time. We have no excuses. Okay. There are books on your ministry. There are books on your business. There are books on your children that you can have access to. If you are married, there are books on your spouse because you guys are intertwined. You are one. You can also have access to their books. Okay. God wants to reveal all of these things to you. We live in a voice activated kingdom. We should be decreeing things because we're kings and establishing them here. We're decreeing the things that God tells us is that we go to the kingdom of heaven, which is where we are from. We get what those decrees and things are, and we come back and we establish them here on earth. So that's that. I am going to stop there. That is about visitations, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I got a lot of it. And next week, we're going to talk about unrepented imaginations. Again, this is so good. I hope you guys are love liking and sharing this. Um, this is for the mature saints. And this is going to absolutely, if you put these things to practice, it's going to catapult you spiritually. If you hang around me enough, you're going to be catapulted spiritually. Okay. Because <laughs> everybody around me multiplies and uh, wins. So that's part of my anointing. So I released a um, multiplication anointing to you. Those of you will receive it, that you will be fruitful in multiplying all that you do and that God will continue to pour his revelation in, on you and that you will begin to have visitations in heaven if you haven't been. And if you haven't in a long time, God says, come. He wants to see you. Um, but it has been a pleasure, guys. Uh, we're going to stop there next week. Like I said, we're going to talk about unrepented imaginations, unrepented imaginations. We're going to go deeper in Christ. Um, if you need prayer, um, if you are struggling with healing or any of those things, you can always give me a DM. DM me. I intercede. I can intercede. Um, I can pray with you. Um, intercede on your behalf. Um, and then um, check out our YouTube channel. This will be loaded up on the God Factor, T H E E, God Factor. And it'll also be loaded up on billionaire status because we are taking over billions for the 99, 2000. <laughs> no, but for the kingdom. And so these will be loaded there. Go watch them, re watch them, get it down in your spirit and begin to really activate and live the kingdom life that God has so ordained you to do. Until next time, you all be blessed. God, we thank you for this word. We thank you for all that you're doing in this season. We thank, the, thank you that you are leveling, and, uh, leveling us up spiritually. We thank you for all the manner that you're pouring out on us. We thank you for visitations and we ask that you release any fear or anything that may be standing in the way of these who have listened for them to stop anything that may be trying to stop them from coming into the realms of heaven. We cast it down right now in the name of Jesus and we cover it with the blood of Jesus. And we say that it is an open door for them to come and receive from your table. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. You guys be blessed and I will see you next Wednesday. All right. Okay. Love you guys.